Hey everyone, I'm Walter Bernasiak and this is Top 5. Here we count down the best and worst performances of our most beloved actors. We're doing the worst of Tom Hanks today, folks. God help me. Tom Hanks has no bad performances. There, I said it. The guy is always good. Even if the movie's not great, he's always good. He's even great in the music video for the Carly Rae Jepsen song, I Really Like You. Who gave you eyes like that? Said you could keep them. I don't know how to act or if I should be leaving. I'm running out of time, going out of my mind. I need to tell you something. I'm pregnant. That's right, he makes a video that features Justin Bieber bearable. I had to choose five though, that's the job. Once again, please keep in mind, none of these are bad. They're just not as great when compared to his best performances, and that's the only way I can rationalize this list. Let's do this. Number five, Stephen Gold in Punchline. There was a trend in the 80s when Hanks was playing these jerks. He's not bad as this character type, but he's so charismatic that you always want to like him. For that reason, it's difficult to buy into him in roles like this. Sally Field plays a housewife and mother who has always wanted to be a stand-up comedian. I want to be a comedian. When she seeks advice from medical school flunk-out Steven, who happens to kill it every night on stage, they form an unlikely bond that is both comedic and heartbreaking. Hanks plays the classic smarmy screw-up in this movie. He does the best with the material given to him, but this script isn't very good. I'm guessing that maybe a decent amount was cut out of the film too, because big events and character turns happen throughout the movie for no reason. The motivations don't make sense. All of our lives are funny, babe. We're God's animated cartoons. A love triangle develops between Hanks, Field, and John Goodman, who plays Field's husband. The Hanks-Field relationship was really out of left field, and while Hanks tries to make those scenes work, they just aren't earned. The thing that really got me was, hey, that's DJ Tanner. Hanks is pretty funny at a few moments in the movie, but all in all, Punchline dragged him down a bit. We all know he's chosen much better roles and movies. Number four, Rick Gasco in Bachelor Party. I'm not a fan of these types of movies, and while Hanks fit the bill for this kind of role in 1984, that's also the same year that Splash came out, so I think this may have been one of the last times that he just played a delinquent with no depth. Rick is finally engaged to his longtime girlfriend, Debbie. So, his friends decide to throw him one last big party before he says, I do. The bachelor party that ensues is anything but a small send-off for Rick's single status. Prostitutes, dead donkeys, drugs, and alcohol make for a night to remember. Or forget. Hanks can be his usual charming self in this movie, and he made me laugh a few times. I can't sleep. Oh. I got something for that. There are also a few jokes that don't land. Debbie? And, uh, Bond. James Bond. One of the only knocks I'll say against him is that he can be a little over-the-top Hanksy at a couple points. Bachelor Party was right before people started to take him seriously. Good thing he left these types of roles behind. Number three, Sherman McCoy in The Bonfire of the Vanities. I can without a doubt say that this is the worst movie that features both Tom Hanks and Geraldo Rivera. Adapted from the Tom Wolfe novel, Wall Street executive Sherman McCoy is in the middle of a night out with his greedy mistress, Maria, when she runs over a black high school student and drives off without going to the police. Reporter Peter Fallow discovers the scandalous story and riles up New York with his coverage of the case, which soon goes to trial. Hanks plays another jerk in this movie, but this time, a rich one. He seems a bit miscast in a film that features some other big stars, including Bruce Willis, Morgan Freeman, and Melanie Griffith. It's the same problem I mentioned earlier. We all want to like Tom Hanks, but there's very little reason to in this film because his character is pretty sleazy for a lot of it. Aubrey Buffing. Who? Aubrey Buffing, the poet. 
He's on the short list for the Nobel Prize. He has AIDS. You'll love him. The movie is trying to say something profound about race relations and the influence of politics in the media, but it just comes off as preachy at a few points. Just about everyone in the film is a miserable human being. There's really no one that we're supposed to like, except maybe Morgan Freeman as the judge. The film is also shot in a very unique manner. Lots of low angles, split focuses, and other strange visuals cap off a film that was peculiar from the start. Maybe go check out the book, but skip the film. Number two, Ray Peterson in The Burbs. This movie isn't the worst thing in the world, although Hanks' usual spot on comedy and personality don't find the right outlet in this one. Suburbanite Ray Peterson's week off turns into a scary, wacky romp when his new neighbors give the rest of the neighborhood reason for concern. They're never seen, and strange noises are heard coming from the house, in addition to graves dug in the backyard. Is Ray just being paranoid, or is there something more sinister afoot? We all know the Hanks yell. It's very distinct. There's a lot of it in this movie. He's both over the top and also looks pretty bored. I can't blame him though, there's not much for him to sink his teeth into here. He's just uncharacteristically bland and doesn't have much to work with in terms of characters to bounce off of, script, or comedy. The Burbs isn't great and it left Hanks with a boring role. Joe Dante has directed much better movies. Go watch those. And the number one worst Tom Hanks performance is... Lawrence Watley Born III in Volunteers. By Jove, Jim, have you seen Thomas Hanks in Volunteer? Why, yes, I have, old chap. Isn't that the film where he plays a rich man who unwillingly joins the Peace Corps? But of course, he ventures somewhere in the Orient and learns to be a better man. Quite the tale. <laughs> <laughs> quite right, quite right. After being threatened by debt collectors, rich playboy Lawrence Bourne stows away on a plane of Peace Corps volunteers set for Thailand. Once they arrive, the crew is tasked with building a bridge. The group begins work, but soon discover the CIA, communists, and a drug lord have a vested interest in the bridge's construction. This is just a comedic performance that doesn't work all that well for Hanks. He's playing yet another redeemable jerk, but this time with a rich guy accent. You're a douchebag, son. My hat is off for you. No. You can't do this to me. I, I'm very rich and I have certain rights. Even through this character, a little bit of why we all love Hanks still peeks out. John, for what I'm about to do, you should be ashamed. I'd like to go home, please. Please, can I go home? Please, just let me go home. Can I go home? John Candy and the future Mrs. Hanks, Rita Wilson, also appears in this film. John Candy is always enjoyable, but this film is just a basic story with a different setting. Nothing to write home about, and Hanks' performance is subpar for his outstanding career. There. I did it. Now go watch his good movies. Which are basically all of them. I want to hear what you guys think. What is your least favorite Tom Hanks movie and or performance? Who do you want me to cover next on the show? Leave a comment and let me know. Follow me on Twitter at awesome underscore Walter and come back next week for a brand new Top 5. By Jove, Jim, have you seen Thomas Hanks in Volunteer? Well, yes, I have, old chap. Isn't that the film where he plays a rich man who joins the... Oh, I'm the only joke. By Jove, Jim, have you seen Thomas Hanks in Volunteer? Well, yes, I have, old chap. Isn't that the film where he plays a rich man who unwillingly joins the Peace Corps? But of course, he joins the Orient now. Isn't that the film where he plays a rich man who unwillingly joins the Peace Corps? But of course, he voted... But of course, he ventures somewhere in the Orient and learns to be a better man. Quite the tale. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> We're close. <laughs> quite right, quite right.